Mm-hmm. What's going on? Hello. Jamming out. What's up, hey, dude? Oh, oh it's, uh, it's playing twice for me because I forgot to turn off the other one. There oh, it is. Well, I, I don't that. hear it. That's okay. I learned that the, the, the hard way, like in episode two. So rookie mistakes, hey. man. We're, hey, we're 17 all... episodes in. We're starting to get the hang of it. I think so. You know, you know, <laughs> just give it another t- like 17 or, or more. We'll, we'll really be solid. Uh, yeah. Happy. Yeah. Happy Friday, dude. Good to see happy you. Happy Friday. I'm excited to see you next week in New York. Yes. Um, NFT NYC is coming up. I found out uh, right now NFT LA is happening. If anybody's in LA, you should go hit up some of these satellite events. Um, I had a great time there last year. Um, and I think it's an interesting way that they're kind of, instead of having a conference in one spot, they're just like, we're going to brand this whole week of mini events around the city like, as a thing. And that's pretty, that's pretty smart in this, uh, this current market. Like little pop-up shops and little art galleries and little yeah. talks and stuff. That's, that is smart. I feel like I've seen on my timeline, people say like, did you know it was happening this week? So I feel like, you know, getting the word out might be a, you know, a, a challenge, but for anyone who's out there, that's really special to just be able to not have the stress of like, a major conference and just kind of like enjoy little pop-ups, which yeah, most yeah. people go for the satellite events anyway. So why not just have a giant, exactly. uh, it's almost like South by Southwest where that's just a bunch of satellite events. Um, yeah. so I think it's an interesting concept. I think a lot of places should consider that instead of going into this big, uh, having to create a huge event. Uh, but next week's event should be crazy. Uh, lots of great stuff, <laughs> tons yeah. of great art events. So I'm yep. um, hoping, uh, that we can both meet, all sorts of fun people uh, yeah. that week. And I'm excited uh, to see our guest. Our next, our guest today will be there. Yes. As well. Yes. It's uh, really exciting. Um, so, yep. So we're, we're excited to welcome uh, to the program, an amazing uh, generative artist uh, who I really, I can't wait to just like pick her brain in terms of how she does what she does with the magic and the code and the, and the art and the things. Uh, we, <laughs> the magic. It is. I, it, it is. If I don't understand how something works. It's magic. Period. I agree with that. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, we have Jimena Buena Vida to the show. Hello. Hello. <laughs> welcome. Hi. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming. Thank you guys for inviting me. This is exciting. Happy 17th episode. It's Thank, a lot. You. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> I think you might be our first generative guest. Is that right, Adam? Um, you know, uh, we're going to go with it, even if it's not true, but I'm pretty sure it is. I yeah, have a, I, I, so. I have a long list. I mean, you yourself, Brian, obviously have like so much, you know, to offer in that regard. But there is so uh, many amazing people in the space. Uh, oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're not going to be the last. I know that much. Like, there's <laughs> there's there's way too many talented people who, who do generative art. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, how, how you've been doing it for for a while, too, now. Right. Like uh, it's. It's sort of like you found a really cool lane in in generative art. Like I, yeah, I, I, so like like, I can always see your stuff. I got of my out of the closet uh, last summer, but mm-hmm. I have been, um, you know, just just doing it since I since I learned about art blocks. That was like in early like twenty twenty one, and so yeah, it's been a lot of overcoming like PTSD about like my own, like learning disabilities. And then um, I think like also like there was a period where like I unconsciously just wanted to um, like understand what was like my own visual language before mm. like I jump into code. So it's been like very cool. It's been like a really cool, like kind of uh, journey of like I didn't necessarily know that I was going to land doing code uh, and it just like just felt right the moment I started doing it and um, when I started like being more public about it and sharing it it started resonating with you know kind of um, my collectors and so it's been really fun uh, to just step into it yeah yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a piece up that we can we can kind of like talk about and pick pick a pick over here this piece right here is uh, is called "More Ways Than One." Let's put it that way. Beautiful piece. Okay, so right that here. that's not generative. That's like oh, of course, my, <laughs> like of course, of course. And like, I, sh- <laughs> I should have like clarified when I send you that. But uh, yeah, just this was just actually, I think it was a piece in 2021. Uh, shout out to Moody, uh, who is the collector that owns it. Um, just an amazing, amazing person. He's actually in New York City. I hope to see him next oh, week. Cool, speaking, yeah. yeah, NFT NYC. 
Um, but yeah, this was just, again, just kind of like a fun exploration um, of, of collaging and, um, you know, just, it was made in Procreate and I know Adam, you're uh, pretty familiar with it. Oh yeah. Live, live in that program. But I, I do think though that, okay, so this isn't generative, but I think I'll, I'll click. I have a bunch of other stuff of yours that we'll, we'll look through that is uh, generative, um, like on prohibition. Um, so, but I think it, it speaks to the visual language that you, you set out to try to continue, you know, in terms of like an evolution of style. Here, let's take a look at this piece here, or this this series right here on Prohibition. Um, this one, all our faces. This one is generative, right? And this yes. is, um, in terms of like a visual language, though, like you know, in terms of color and shape, you can still see the the connection from early work of yours. You know, in terms of like what what you like to do in terms of like storytelling with art. Yeah. So like I. I have an obsession for pop art, um, minimalism, architecture, just bright colors and chat like, I guess, art. There is so many different, like, you know, kind of just um, ideas and inspirations, like from all these like things, but I, I guess I'll just start like depicting some. And so I grew up in Bogota, Colombia um, and Bogota is just like, it's a city like New York City, you know, big buildings, busy people, uh, lots of traffic, you know, just kind of a lot of survival also, um, and just like beautiful history and beautiful architecture. And growing up um, in the 80s, 90s, um, you know, just there was also a lot of like, techno and electronic music and kind of like that, that vibe. Mm. Um, and so all, all those, for whatever reason, all, all, all of that just kind of plays, uh, you know, huge kind of push into what I create um, in terms of like that modernism and like the contemporary art. Um, just so you know, I have like zero background in art history. I went to school for engineering. I have a master's in computer science. The reason I ended up in the state was in the, here in the states is because um, I I came in 2009 to do a master's in computer science, and that's you know, kind of also where like the code uh, knowledge comes from. Um, and so yeah, so there is that like from the architecture side, but there is also the chat like. Um, kind of basic shapes, right? Like a lot of my work, as you like see it, is just basic rectangles and triangles and circles. And I think there was something really beautiful that happened to me through the pandemic and hard, uh, which was that I started just to, just kids stop, like all the schools stopped. And as a mom, I um, just started watching my kids, right? And it was like day to day, and a lot of times I was like, I have no idea what to do with them. I'm not necessarily like a teacher or anything, but making art was just so easy. And when they started creating and they were like two and three, um, there was something so powerful for me in watching them because there was not really a questioning in their, in their output. Mm. For them, like everything was a masterpiece for them there wasn't really a hang into like, oh, let's look at this piece. Let's, you know, let's change this color or things like that. They just finished something, were grateful, excited, and they moved on to the next piece. So watching that process of creation for them was also very freeing for me personally as an artist. And that really was when I uh, decided to kind of jump back into let's let's explore this part of me that has always been so vivid the artist in me, like, even though, like, I went for science, right, something so exact and something mm. so, uh, you know, mathematical, there was always this calling into, like, spirituality, into just the power of being in Awi um, with, like, my own creations and life in general. Um, and so, you know, there was kind of that, all that part, like, played also a role into, into what I learn later uh in terms of like nfts and and being able to like share my work like more like broadly with people um so yeah 
Oh, I love these. They these yeah. these feel very much like aerial shots of uh, of architecture, um, or or just sometimes they they look like just straight up you know buildings. Uh, but there's so much life in all of these. Uh, yeah. What, I How? love that you guys are using like the, the like the explorer here to look at this collection. That's fun. Yeah, yeah that, I don't even remember it. Like if we're seeing these diagonal ones. I don't even remember seeing those in the outputs. Those were like uh, pretty rare. So there is just like a few of them only that like came out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the that's the I mean, what's interesting is we're looking at this um explored and we're seeing essentially an infinite amount of these, but you limited the collection to only a hundred. And so that, oh, I think wow. that's that's always a really interesting aspect about generative art is that you you build mm. something to be so expansive, but then with this, it's only so many allowed. But with with a project like this, oh, go on. No, I just want to say like a very quick comment on that because I feel like every time I'm coding one of these like bigger projects, there is this part of me that's grieving the outputs that nobody will ever see because you don't know that you know. Yeah. You can, yeah. You can out to see those, so you're right you create these and you limit it only and there is just so many you know that come out in the in the project yeah so for a project like this for instance you had the kind of the concept do you start making procreate sketches of what you want it to be or do you build it up block by block and you kind of say okay i'm going to make a randomized grids and then you start i'm going to make these waves that fill or like how how do you go about building a generative project i think a lot of people here might not uh understand that aspect yeah it's you know it really all depends uh for this particular project there wasn't really like a sketch or anything like like physical that that drove this this was more like me exploring um right after like epiphanies which was my collection i should have shared that link i'm sorry that's so a bright moments one right yeah that was like yeah. my, my bright moments collection um which i was an artist in residence for them last july and right after that project this project came out and so it was just kind of like a, a just digital experiment and transition into oh let me explore more into what can we create right like with these this is like just a simple grid um, that is like basically basically packs like in squares and rectangles, right? To just just give a more like uh, randomization. But for this one was literally just physically moving from code new project to uh, old project to new project. Um, let's you know explore more of like the, the curvature. There was a I really tried to tie it like all my work to self-regulation and mental health um and you know I'm, I'm a survivor and um experienced like childhood trauma so my art is all really rooted on um i guess like digging into like all these onion layers of mm. my all inner self and so this was a collection that started with like man like the imposter syndrome is hitting really hard after like you know like I don't know, just, uh, it always hits in a way. So how can I do something that inspires like embracing all these parts of ourselves that we're ashamed to show? Mm -hmm. And so that's the reason like all our faces and that's the reason there is like these cubes um, in some of the squares because it was just like an invitation to my own per like inner self to be like, just welcome everything. Welcome the imperfections. Actually, at the end of the day, like the imperfections are actually what leads you to like seek and like kind of seek curiosity and uh, kind of like in the same like pattern of like mistakes leads you to like learn lessons, right? So like bring it all, bring everything that we are. There was also like in this particular project, a lot of like layers that came like from social media and how like in social media you only have a grid and it's mm. like just flat but you cannot really see other parts of people's lives and a lot of times like for me personally there is a lot of layers of like comparison that comes as a result of like the scrolling and so again like this project was like let's bring all the pieces and all the faces of of my life and of our lives uh and build something that you know may not be perfect but uh hopefully it turns out beautiful. And so that was 
that was kind of the, 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 the process kind of, I guess, um, on, on this particular project. Um, but there is the other project that I, I, I don't know if I should. Well, I have, I just have a, a epiphanies. I just, yeah, for, for people yeah. who don't know what that looks like, this is, uh, one of the outputs from that project. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and it's, it's, I don't know for, for what it's worth. When I look at a piece like this or, or this piece here that I'll share in a second, I, I know that it's your work. Um, <coughs> pardon. Um, uh, but like, uh, in terms of just like the, the colors, the way it's laid out, there's just something about it that, that very much like speaks to a visual language that feels unique to you, if that makes sense. Um, so like, I don't know, I, I, I can see the, I can see the the correlation, and it's interesting to know that that this one came after uh, the one from Bright Moments. Yes, um, you know there is. Was this a, this is the other one that you sent to recently? Yeah. yeah so this one was like a, was a collaboration. I think like Sasha Styles, where there I wanted to tell, like everybody had like their own their own project, um, but. These, these had a really fun minted aspect because the minting didn't happen right on the on the flash side. You had to go into these interactive, like, uh, how do you call that? Like a, Is, like a <clears throat> room. You had to literally just go into a, a, a room online and walk through all these paths and pick all these doors. Um, and then every door led to a project and every like as you went in every room there was like different challenges that you had to follow or like things that you have to click like places you had to stand kind of uh portals that you had to open and what like the timing like played on like the colors um and i don't know that i'm doing like the best job at minting it was so amazing to be honest mm. i like this is one of like the most i creative projects that I've been a part of in the way that it was like minted to the, to the collectors. Yeah. So what am I, what am I looking at now in terms of like the ability to, to change the parameters? <clears throat> yeah. So like FX Sash has like a way where you can't just again, yeah. Play with, with kind of the, the params, the parameters and the colors and these all, um, these all these parameters were like the the kind of the deciding point in these rooms that I'm just trying to describe so awfully. Um, so yeah, I don't know that I'm doing the best job, but like, yeah. No, I think it makes sense. Uh, I I understood what you were trying to say though. Um, is so then when someone's doing something like this and changing the parameters themselves. Is that something that then, and I'm just not familiar with this part of the process, um, for this drop in particular, they is someone able to then influence the outcome and like mint right. what they've kind of like, based on the parameters that you've set up ahead of time, what they want to get out of it. They can, <clears throat> instead of be completely random, they have some element of control over it. It is a co-creation with the collector, right? And they That's are cool. the co, yes. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know how any of this works. <laughs> <laughs> like I, my, my limited experience with, with, with coding is in after effects um, to tell things when to go left, right, and, you know, rotate. Um, and then I've uh, just started looking into chat GPT to kind of wrap my head around like the coding I, aspect. I can, of I can explain it to you like very basic line, maybe confuse you more, but just think, yeah, about please. think, think, think about like making a cake. How do you have to have butter, flour, eggs, three yep. eggs or whatever, right? Um, and maybe you're going like a little bit more organic and like you're not following exactly a recipe, but you do have to have like certain guidelines, right? And so like that's kind of in a way like how you code a project like this, right? You start with like, um, let's make a chocolate cake. So like, let's just have chocolate and we're going to have like our parameters are going to be like that. Um, and then, you know, you have all these like basically like ingredients, right? And you know how much of each you want into your recipe. And so it happens to be the same, like with this computer languages that you say, I want these colors. 
um, you know, I want these shapes, right? I want this chocolate, this flower, um, and just like put it all together in the canvas and, you know, just bake something that hopefully yeah. is cool. I don't, how, I don't, yeah. So then, so then I guess I'm wondering just, in, just out of curiosity, how much, um, of, of any, any project that you're working on is, uh, a mixture of like intention versus chance and the ability to like let chance play as a factor in, in the work, like in terms of like a surprise in terms of the outcome or, you know, what you're, it's, what you're trying to do and then what it, it does. So that's the part that I, that draws me to, to this medium with code mm -hmm. that is science, right? Is mathematics. So you have to be incredibly exact and you have to be incredibly intentional. And yet there is this part that is very spiritual for me personally, which is the randomization aspect of it that just allows randomization to yeah. speed out something. So it's, it's, a, it's to me so fucking, sorry, so incredibly profound in it's the okay. sense that you have to have all these rules. You have to have all these, as I said, exact instructions. But then you say, like, let's mix it all up also with randomization and let's let's see what comes out. And so I'm in constant, like, are we of the stuff that comes out? Even when it's not that great, it's always like, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so powerful, you know, just just that surprise, that continuous um are we right? And and the fact that there is like just so many possibilities. Um it, it's it's a beautiful medium. Like it's been very awakening for me personally, like in my own spirituality, uh, in my own like personal growth. Uh it's just just been very powerful experience for me to play with with code and art. Yeah, that's well said. No, I think the the fun of randomization is that it gets to surprise the artist, and it's very. And, and before this, it was like there was never a time where I was like um, surprised by something I was making because I had full control over what was going to be seen. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of people, especially with something like this can get to see kind of the inner workings of how the randomization works. And so, um, no, this is a cool project. I hadn't actually seen this one before. I'm glad you brought it. Yeah. The algorithm is always against me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's, well, hard speaking of the, well, it's hard to get eyes, you know? Yeah. Well, the algorithm was, uh, in your favor recently with your rareable drop, which did yes. gangbusters. That was, uh, how many ended up getting minted with that piece? Thirteen thousand four hundred and four. <laughs> Thirteen. Incredible. Autism. Yeah, it was very fun. Very surprising. I thought it, I was gonna have to pull teeth, and fifty were gonna be sold. To just be very transparent, I had a really fun drop three weeks before that via base in layer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think I saw like. 20 or like 13 NFTs priced like similarly. And so it's like, I mean, we're just going to do, you know, what we do. We put our heart, we create the work that you can best create. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the market is rough and we just go with the flow, push it as much as possible. And I think it meant it like within the first 20 minutes or something like 700, like something just yeah. crazy. Um, so just very grateful, to be honest, for the absolute powerful work of Aniko and Justin and James and Jana and everybody at Redable, because yeah. without them, it could have not been possible. There was a lot of marketing that happened because of the amazing work and intention, intention they put on. And so I, I yeah. take some credit, um, you know, um, just amazing, absolutely amazing no, it was well, awesome. We we're, were yeah. all rooting for you, cheering. Yes. I, you know, minting some and cheering you on. No, we were we were all watching that as as it kept going, and we're like, yes, go, go, go! This is incredible. I'm trying to find it right now. I only found the the still from it because it's a beautiful oh, yeah. uh, animation. Um, and was that one code or was it yeah. a render? Yeah, okay. no, that was that was P5 JS. 
Okay, and yeah. it was actually um, an exploration that came from the, ge the generative coding um, experiment. I don't know if you are familiar with that, but the January is... Um, oh, January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's basically 30 days of prompting. And so for anyone that wants to explore with code, every day of January, there, there has, there is just, um, there is a word or there is an inspiration and you just go through it and, and, you know, there is all the community, uh, the, you know, a lot of, a lot of the community members of like the generative art, like created. And so it's very fun because you put yourself out there, but you see everybody putting their stuff out there and you learn a ton and all of a sudden you get just the juices going, right? Like there mm -hmm. was like so much inspiration that happened as a result of that. So um, I think like Peter Plasma was uh, kind of who came up with it. And I may be wrong with this, just like a huge shout out to, to him also. Um, I met him in Paris uh, in February and we talked about, you know, um, just code and I thank him for for the inspiration behind this um because it was you know it was literally that that generate that that you know that was prompting all these like um yeah just exploratory you know just stuff with code so it's fine that's awesome no i, I love the piece it. yeah i love it too no, now it's really cool to see the evolution of your work because i i feel like we met the first time what was the first nft nyc i went to back in 2021 maybe yeah fall of 2021 we met and then meeting you and then seeing your art just continue to evolve and now you know i would say you're a, a top artist in the space you have oh my gosh. No you know, way. thousands of collectors now you, <laughs> you and adam have been like just also huge inspiration i really love what you do i love your creativity i love your intentionality i love your confidence i love how fun you make things be um and i i truly believe that we stand in, in the shoulders of, of the heroes and like the big people in the space. And the two of you are like two, you know, just two amazing artists. I, I really respect and value and um, just, yeah, just, I just have fun like watching you guys also evolve and do all the stuff that you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I feel the same way about a lot of artists that came before me that I look up to. So uh, it's yeah. always important for us to keep passing it on to the next, next group of people that arrive. Um, but yeah. Oh, Speak, that maybe, of, maybe that maybe that's time for a segue. I, I think that's an incredible segue, actually. And thank you uh, for the compliment. But also you're well deserving of those same compliments, Jimena. Um, But speaking of people who deserve a bigger shot or just more exposure, that's the other thing that we do at the show is uh, we, we spend a little bit of time where each of us has picked out some artists that we think deserve a bigger spotlight. And we do our best to to share that work out. Um, so uh, what do you guys think? Think we should do a little uh, show and tell? Sure. When I say something, I hated the yeah. question because I have literally like at least 50 people I want like eyes on. Yeah. And it was like, ah. how do you pick three? I know. I know. Well, because <laughs> it's only an hour show. Otherwise, and this is why we're doing it every, you know, every week. We're just, we're trying. We're just, if you chip away just a little bit, right? And if, uh, yeah. if you're lucky enough to have any kind of platform in this space, any kind at all um we highly encourage people to just you know share things out from other people friends people you don't know just art that you like um retweets are free it's just the easiest way that i've ever you know seen things on my timeline so we highly encourage it but and i'm kidding i didn't hate the question i, I didn't think you hated it <laughs> how <laughs> dare you <laughs> i really actually absolutely adore the part that you guys are opening room for like like people to be seen is so difficult in the space. It's always is, but now with the memes and it just feels so hard to get any eyes and cells. And so this is like very beautiful that you guys are taking this time. So let's jump into it and let's talk about these artists. I'm excited. Let's do some show and tell. Yeah. And, the, and, and just to quickly touch on that, the thing I keep reminding myself is that even though you can only curate or support a certain amount of artists at a time there's an infinite amount of opportunities um i've that i've found and i think other people find that we can uh include others if, as a part of anything we do so I, I think that's what's really cool about the space is that there's just so many ways for us to shine lights on others and that leads us into show and tell who should go first adam 
Um, okay. Uh, let's, let's pull up a, a piece that, uh, well, so Jimena, you picked three artists and I picked three pieces from those artists. So let's go here first. Ooh, it's almost like a collaboration. Yes, it is. Someone that, uh, you know, uh, I've seen around since, uh, the beginning that I've been in here, uh, is, uh, Sheila Darcy in Sketch Poetic with this oh, yeah. beautiful, beautiful piece here, um, Sketch Reflection um so yeah uh how many want to want to just sort of like obviously you're seeing this piece maybe oh, not for the first time but you're seeing you know this is someone that you wanted to to, to bring yes. up uh so let's, let's speaking uh, of time like i could go like on and on for like an hour at least like speaking about sheila and how she's a gift for our community um our nft space and anyone that is in here like supporting mental health which i think like in a way, like every artist is, in a way. Mm. Um, and she's a huge advocate for arts and healing. Um, she's worked with the prison system. Uh, she's created an amazing community of art and artists and daily sketches for safe regulation and mental health. She's been doing this maybe like for maybe 15 or 20 years. I may be completely wrong, but like, you know, just she has a ton of just intention under her belt and she continues to really just shed so like shed so many light to many artists in this space and and retweet speaking of the retweeting and opening you know just just she's she's somebody i look up because of her generosity and reciprocity and the way that she has this beautiful energy around her to to create community and to um to kind of I don't know, bring healing to the isolation that we've been mm. all like, within the last four years. And um, she's like such a powerful leader. Like you you hear her speak and it's almost like just a bomb on your soul, you know. Um, and so she sits down, uh, you know, every day and creates this work. Um, and she literally, um, you know, just has, again, this way to, to touch my heart and the heart of so many, so many people. She also has a book. Um, I don't know if you're able to like share links or anything like that, but it's, it's a book about healing and sketching every day and having a daily practice. Doesn't matter if it's five minutes, 10 minutes or whatever time you have um, to just create like organically and intuitively. Um, and she's in LA. Um, I've met her, um, you know, just maybe a, a few times. And yeah, I really want her to, um, yeah, she's somebody that deserves all the eyes. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. There's yes. I have it. It's amazing. <laughs> well, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I love that piece that you picked, Adam, with the eye, the eye in the middle. Yeah. Just the, or it, it makes sense talking about it being kind of this meditation because they do feel like they're kind of, um, I don't know, kind of sketched out with the flow of everything. And then you just kind of build upon that. They look soothing to make. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, soothing to look at so i think it's just awesome work yeah it's amazing awesome well thank you thanks for sharing that one that is uh that's pretty awesome all right brian you are up next sir oh 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 who, me who did i pick uh let's see let's find out uh here we go we're gonna go with this first one scraps uh, yeah of by kaylee yes so this is a piece that I collected this week. It was kind of a fun surprise. I didn't realize uh, I collected an edition, and the people that collected the edition also were airdropped a one of one. Ooh. And so I've been I've been diving into her work recently, which I think is really fascinating because she uses, she, you know, she has a painting background, and then she uses AI to kind of create these bases, and then she goes in with I think Procreate and repaints over them to really give them this kind of smooth, soft feel. Um, and you know this piece is beautiful, but I, you know I did a show um, with Super Chief that was a cat themed show, and that was where I kind of first saw kind of her style. Mm. Uh, and what the other part I think is really interesting is she then takes a lot of these digital things, uh, di digital things, di digital artworks, <laughs> and then will then translate them into physical paintings. Mm. Uh, so she, it's like this: the the overall workflow of AI to digital painting and then into real painting, I think is a really interesting workflow. So do you happen to know if we're looking at 
digital. This is the digital or, one. Okay, that's fascinating. But then I think she she doesn't pair them, mm -hmm. uh, so the the physical paintings will all be sold separately down the road. But I just think it's you know I think her work is you know you feel free to dig through some of the other works, but it, in terms of the kind of stylistic AI world, it feels like she's honed in on a style that's uniquely hers. Mm -hmm. Wow! Yeah, I need yeah. that. Send the link. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's a that's, funny. that's another thing for for everybody who's watching. Um, at the end of this, uh, on our Art First Twitter account, um, there's going to be a recap of all the art that we talked about with links to all the artists and give them everybody a follow. And you know, this way you can kind of keep keep the conversation going and dive in. Um, this is great. These are really beautiful. And and I would not suspect the version of AI in the workflow, but I. I think that's really cool. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's yeah. interesting seeing how traditional painter yeah. artists are kind of approaching this this new kind of vibe. Yeah, good pick, man. Mm -hmm. Good good stuff. I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll move on. Uh, I went and I just started uh, digging this week. This was a. Um, I went to exchange art. Uh, I went to the hug to then f go down rabbit holes to, to find people uh, whose work I thought was really pretty awesome. Um, so this piece here is, let's bring it up. Here we go. This is a pretty cool piece. The Gates of Eden. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Core 305. Um, yeah. Uh, I love, I love the, you know, the, the pop of color. I love, the, the the strong silhouette i love just the the way like all the texture and flow um oop, and i go to make it bigger and it gets smaller and then giant okay cool oh. look at that though just gorgeous oh yeah amazing the texture is amazing mm -hmm. yeah and the geometry it's really and interesting yeah i just started you know just again an artist that i had not been familiar with and so uh, kind of just going down the rabbit hole um, and, you know, uh, let's see, there was some more work. Yeah. This, this, oh, one wow. caught my, this caught my eye first, but I wound up going with the other piece, but again, I highly encourage everybody whenever, whenever we, we, we showcase, you know, any art, just go down and, you know, go through everybody's collections and see what That's else they cool. got. Right. Love the hair. It's like, it's almost like uh, like rocks or like mineral. Mm -hmm. really neat the emotion i can i can feel it and the expression it's uh like so moving yeah so i was excited wow. to share that one out yeah yeah no it's definitely a unique style yeah good good find i love mm -hmm. it very cool all What's right again really core k-o-r-e k-o-r-e yeah. core 305 um, awesome okay. all links will be linked up in the linky link um after yeah all right Jimena, you're up again we have um this piece right here yeah Ooh, this piece um so uh is it uh jorge 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 led i can't say it, led zema, led led zema. zema. Led, led mm -hmm. zema. yeah um generative art beautiful collection um and all of it felt very sort of like uh, like shipping containers from aerial shots like uh, reminded me of like a, a generative rich caldwell type of you know yeah. yeah so shout out to every latin american artist in the end of this space you know there is just um look at these a lot there. I, I, I had to pick one but they were all just like oh wow really captivating to look at he is an architect and he has a couple sense. props with uh, art vlogs and uh, bright moments. Mm. He was one of the artists in Argentina this past December, uh, you know, that, that did like the drops. It's like an amazing, I, I really have no words for the, the talent on, and the craft, you know, when it comes to coding and how he can depict a lot of just the mathematical um algorithms and equations and like literally like portrayed like on just beautiful pieces of art like this um so he's not only just like an amazing talented as we can 
just see here artist, but um, he is also an amazing, generous human being. And I wanted to really highlight his work because if it wasn't for him, I couldn't have been able to drop epiphanies. Uh, there is a lot of technical aspects that come in terms of getting a code ready for one of these massive projects. And I, to be transparent, wasn't equipped with the knowledge to like complete my project. I had it cooked, but it needed a lot more cooking. <laughs> and we met randomly in one of these like, um, the, our, our blogs has like a, an artist meetup every week um, on like a Zoom meeting or something like that. And I spoke up and said like how I needed help. And he said like, hablo español, like I speak Spanish, like just I'm happy to help in any capacity. And it, it was just overwhelming generosity on his part to help. And I, if there is something that's so beautiful in this space is artists helping artists. And I've gotten so much of it. And I wish I could highlight everybody that's been so generous to me. Uh, but I just wanted to really shed light on on Jorge for being amazing as an artist, as a human being, um, and just overall just a fucking legend. So. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I love that backstory. And these this collection is really cool. I mean, it just shows how powerful the use of shadows are because that really elevates mm -hmm. these pieces and takes it into a whole new dimension. For anyone, you know, just if you go onto his uh, Twitter profile or X profile, he has work on Tesos for like $20, $30. Oh, amazing. That's amazing. And it's about like ruminating thoughts and, you know, just kind of that mental health aspect that he does all so much. Oh, yeah. um, this work, which is the gravitational, uh, whatever that was the, the title, it's a mm -hmm. still for sale, 0.01 ETH. And this was a collection that he dropped with, um, again, with uh, Bright Moments in Argentina. All these pieces animate, they all adapt to your screen. Uh, the work is just beautiful. Like, honestly, everything he does is just awesome. Amazing. Yeah, I remember uh, the other two of those four were early art blocks ones. And I remember that one that looks like, uh, it's like pills almost. Yeah, yes. that one. I remember when that dropped. That was so cool. Mm-hmm. He, that, he did really amazing on, on that collection. Obviously, it's like just beautiful. Yeah. 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 It, it also just like speaks volumes to what is possible with generative. Because I have, you know, I, I often have like a semi preconceived notion of like what a generative project will look like. And then I see stuff like this and I'm like, oh, that's right. It, it, it's anything, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. That's really, really cool, especially yeah. with these. Sky's like, the limit for sure. Yeah. That's really cool. And then, okay, so that's how they animate. Yes. It's really, really tiny, but um, it's kind of like coming up out of a fog. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Wow. Good stuff. Really. Thank you for, for sharing that. It's and just think, also when there is good art and good humanity. It's mm -hmm. like amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, more often than not, at least in the artist circles that I've, I've been in, like that seems to be a common theme with in terms of helpfulness of of community and you know coming in and you know again that's that's kind of like how I got here with Brian, you know, helping me get into this whole space. So it's sort of um, a thing that it's it's nice to see that it continues, you know, even now to to hear stories of people just like willing to just take their time to help even someone they might not even know just to get them into the space and you know or help them dig into something. That's awesome. Very cool. All right, Brian, you are up next. We've got this piece here, which you just picked up. Oh, New yeah. Bay City. You got... Well, uh, it's by Bot, Bot Frula slash Jan Frula. Uh, Jan. Awesome dude. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've collected Jan's work since 2020, maybe 2021. Mm -hmm. um, awesome dude. Awesome art. He he's prolific with the amount of stuff he does. He's also like the number one on the DGen leaderboard for Warpcast right now, because I saw that. <laughs> he's like, he makes people's profiles for DGen. He's just always doing awesome stuff. Awesome. And this one is especially awesome because he did it with Schiller. Um, so did a uh, shout out to Danny. Shout from out to World. Schiller. That's that. Shout out to Schiller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Schiller. Yeah. So what happened with Schiller was they had uh, one of their sponsors dropped out for their New York event. Right. And so they put these editions out as a way to 
raise money to fly various artists out to New York next week. And so these are still minting. I think they have a couple hours left. They're practically free, but you should take us take a moment to go mint these because the more that get minted, the more artists get to come to New York and have their art shown. And it's just a really cool initiative and a uh, shout out to fungible and all the, all the mm -hmm. folks there. That's awesome. And it's a dope piece too. It's a great piece. And he, yeah. he also shared his like sketches uh, on his Twitter for it, which we always love sketches. Nice. Um, but yeah, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm always a fan of everything he makes. Cause I think he's got like the great, he's got such a great style. It's very nineties animation vibe. Yeah. It's fun too. Like I look at this and I'm like, brings me joy. And I feel like yeah. if I show it to my kids. They're going to be like, this is awesome. Let's <laughs> make something like that. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's awesome, man. Really cool. And and yeah, shout out to Schiller for all that they do, uh, uplifting artists uh, all the time. Um, are they going to have the, uh, the Schiller van? Mobile? I, I Mo believe they Mobile. will, yeah. Schiller Mobile. <laughs> so cool that they do that. Just like a, a van that drives around that has art on it. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Good stuff. Um, we got a couple more to go uh let's uh let's go here where am i one two three let's switch it up here this piece has all my wallets come do up. that don't press that don't show again button next time <laughs> but what if what if i want to remember one time what if i forget and i need to show <laughs> so this is surrender um great oh, taste oh. you guys yeah this, this is um Alien Subi, I apologize if I'm getting that wrong, but uh, I love I love the the their work so much. I just you know, yeah. And I found uh, I I went to the hug and and just dug in and you know found their work to be really fun and um, I thought you guys might get a kick out of it. I do. I really love the way the water texture is drawn. I've not seen that style for water, and it's so cool. Yeah, and it all kind of works and flows and. Yeah. Again, I feel, it's, like, I feel like the avatar when like the first view into like the beautiful like you know the movie I'm talking about the movie, movie yeah that lasted like four hours. <laughs> um, it's a long movie, but this like I feel like the integration of the humanity and nature as of mm. like it almost looked like she's in a cozy blanket. Um, just amazing, amazing composition, amazing colors. Just yeah. Fun. It's beautiful, and it remind uh, very similar to Jan in terms of their like stylistic uh, vibes. Um, it, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I also really I'm lost in it right now. Yeah, it's good, yeah, it's, right? It's like great. I appreciate how, like the gradients in yeah. the, in the you know to to give like some texture, and then there's like you know the highlights in there, and that all just feels really good. Um, it's it's like a like a different like a different version of like a killer acid like there's like that yeah you know it sort of falls into that kind of realm of of cool like psychedelic work i love the butterflies mm -hmm. yeah for me it's the mushroom guys <laughs> yeah they're great I, totally i was just thinking like <laughs> i love the flower that looks like very cartoonish on the top left yeah which is like the psychedelic like tripping <laughs> Not that I've done it, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, no judgment. Um, no, judgment. no uh, just art. Yeah, that's great. All right. Awesome find. Thanks. Okay, here we go. Uh, Jimena, I think you have one piece left, and I'm going to go here for Young Weekend. Mm -hmm. And this piece oh. uh, I pulled up for Memories of Portugal. I mean... Let the artist speak for itself. Like I have nothing to say other than like, wow, like their work is absolutely brilliant and amazing. Um, he also works uh, with Manifold. So he's one of the coders there and just always just so, another one of those that's just so like willing to always be there to help. Um, something that's so fun about uh, him is that at Marfa, he had like one of those mini printers. So like you printed like a beautiful sticker. My kids are obsessed with it because it's like all gradients and beautiful, just fun colors. 
And then with that sticker, you could just go home and then mint an NFT. So there was there is always this process that is like something attached to the blockchain, which That's in cool. my opinion is just so powerful yeah. uh, to use the blockchain to like, you know, document our steps, our journey as artists. And I think he does that, um, you know, with, with obviously the knowledge that he has, um, you know, from from a standpoint of the coding and the technology. So not only like his work is just amazing, um, but again, just somebody that's very innovative um, that I think deserves a lot of different eyes. And he's also tried and experimented with prints, which, you know, just is fun to me to see like artists pushing kind of outside of like just digital Mm. Um, and so, yeah, prints are amazing, are gorgeous. So like, look, you know, if anyone has space, um, uh, yeah, just go check out, check out his work. Yeah. I think this is the second time we've had uh, his work featured on the show. So that's really? just two, that's two, 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 uh, two time, two time. Two timer. I think, you, I think Brian, did you, did you feature no, him with Melton to you or somebody? Okay. Someone else brought it, uh, but I do have one of those. And shout out to Young Weekend. I should mention um, everyone should follow him on Warpcast because uh, he gives out raffles to followers. And this week I got lucky and I hit the raffle and I'm getting a custom print from him sent. No. Uh, so he's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. Love that dude. I like that. That's really yeah. cool, man. Shout out to Warpcast, though. I've been having a lot mm -hmm. of fun on Warpcast. I need to, I need to get in there a little more. Yeah. I think they just uh, allowed uh, video and gifts. So, ooh, finally! I think, it, I think it's over. I think I think that's the only place we need to be now. Just saying. I agree. <laughs> um, yeah. Very it's cool. Uh, all right, we got two more to go. Um, Mr. Brian, Mr. Brian, we will go to this piece right here. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. So I would I wouldn't say Kath is emerging. I think she's a very successful, uh, mm -hmm. huge artist in the space. Everyone should hopefully know who she is. Amazing photographer and video, uh, or not video, photo editor. Kath Simard. Um, yeah, Kath Simard. And um, this project I thought deserved a little more eyes on it. I think it's really cool. What it is is she took this trip to Taz Tanzania or something, Australia area. Um, went on this crazy hike. Fat, you know grueled her way to this place and took this awesome photo. Um, and then she wrote a children's book about it. Uh, that's right. all illustrated. And um, this, you know, it all comes packaged as uh, an NFT, a physical print, physical book, and then uh, an NFT book cover. And I believe there's an aspect to it as well, where you'll get duplicates of the book cover so that you can gift it to other people as a way to share NFTs with other people. And so um, it's just a really well thought out package that tells this big story of her journey, but both as a beautiful art piece and also as like a children's book as a way to kind of talk about nature photography. So I just think it, you know, it's really, you know, really, really an interesting cool. uh, way. And I'm always uh, interested when I see artists kind of expand out of their comfort zone and try these big swing ideas. That's really cool. I, I, I saw, um, I had heard that there was a, a children's book attached to it, but I didn't realize just the, the depth of all the things that come with it and the, the you, shareability. Do you really buy cool. things separate or like the NFT? Um, it all comes as all. one, it all comes as one package, I think for 0.15 ETH. Um, and so, yeah, there might be a website. If you click on, sometimes they have like a go to the external website thing and maybe it'll, if you go to the top, three dots in the top right it. view website yeah cool. okay Ooh. so there it is oh wow nice. yeah look at that the book collector's package cool little video like a little behind the scenes this is gorgeous yeah this is fun just inspiring to watch people keep pushing boundaries yeah as, as a recovery like comp like self comparison person. I used to compare myself and feel so jealous, like just to be transparent. And like now I've learned that if someone is doing something, that means like it's possibilities. It's like the universe saying shit can happen if you just put your courage and, and go for it. And this is that, you know, just amazing, amazing. Makes me so happy to see this. Wow. Oh, these are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's really cool to to also to for her to 
be brave enough to expand into something so such so much bigger than just photography right you look at photography and you're like okay so you're gonna make a kid's book out of like your photos and then like to really just take it all the way to you know such a um uh, an awesome conclusion no i love that this is really great and they're beautiful too good for her mm -hmm. man. good good shout out man mm -hmm. really cool Oh, I should claim my physical. I haven't done that yet. I got to go do that. Go claim your physical. <laughs> Let's just stop the show right now. Nope. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's not do that. We got one more left to go. Uh, this piece uh, that I found that I don't oh. I didn't know the artist. Um, uh, heart, heart. Uh, and um, this was from uh, a series uh, and it just, I was like, well, that's amazing. You know, that just kind of hit me. Um, a uh, gorgeous little story that's happening here um yeah and in addition to that and i think you know i don't want to misspeak in terms of like how it's how it's created um but neural photographer and artist like i thought that was just a really cool description and yeah so you see some some dolly some mid journey um oh so it's all it's I all it's artificial really, yeah. interesting yeah. Yeah, it looks like if for a moment it looked like it was a natural phenomena, but now okay. that's what I thought. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't that's think really it is. Cool. But it's, it's really awesome storytelling with these. Let's see if we can pull one up a little more. That's why it's important for artists to share their process because I would not have known. <laughs> yeah, and and there's nothing wrong with you know any of that. I think it's just you know sharing the process is also just really interesting. Like I like yeah. to know, you know mixture of this and that and hand drawn whatever so i also just like how um how how this feels very painterly but also like i know um dali at some point was doing outputs that had sort of like a little bit more of a painterly grainy look to them and this kind of reminds me of that where you know in that process of as the tech would get better like early mid journey right like v1 mid journey is wildly different from what it is right now um highly yeah. polished and and there's like there's beauty in in those early versions of things that are just like trying to still parse through what our world is and spit it back out at us and so i kind of feel like this lives in that sort of like early version of dali or you know like very cool painterly look to it yeah really excited i about wondered it. if like they edit this somehow with mm. you know just photoshop or illustrator or because he's, I completely agree with you that it looks very like a, a, a painting, uh, mm -hmm. like just amazing to be able to achieve something like this. And, and someone that hasn't really played that much with, with those tools, uh, because every time I try, like nothing like this comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like when I see stuff that is just yeah. like so moving, carries so much emotion, texture and a story, it's so powerful to me. Yeah very cool yeah. um yeah thanks uh thanks for taking a look guys and amazing awesome picks. Day, guys yeah this is uh this is a whole a whole bunch of good stuff today um mm -hmm. but uh i just uh i just wanted to kind of wrap it up and say thank you uh to everybody who's come to hang out um we had some comments i didn't uh throw everything up there i don't even know if we had sometimes we don't remember to throw the comments up but there was a lot of love out here for for jimena um some people were, you know, asking what, you know, you got, you know, interested, what got you interested in creating art with code and, um, and in general, just, you know, people, people are excited about this stuff. So hopefully, you know, and I think that a lot of this, um, you know, discussion got us there in terms of like, you know, answering a lot of those questions. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend people just go ahead. If you're not already following him and I go and follow her and, uh, you know, follow the journey. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, I want to thank uh, you guys uh, and uh, Jimena. Thank you so much for for coming oh, and hanging out yeah. with us. Is there any any upcoming things you want to plug? Yeah. No, only because they are like not ready to be to be plugged. Okay. But just, <laughs> I just want to know, like, what everybody to know that it's a lot in the works and just yeah. a lot of very exciting things that are like literally lighting my my soul up. But just I want to take like thirty seconds to honor the two of you. Um, I was telling Adam before we started that uh, my friends Diana and Danielle and myself, we run a podcast and we ended up with 40 episodes. This is like early 2021, maybe. And the amount of work that it takes 
to like not only the energy, but like showcasing and planning and the background and all the conversations. And you guys were so kind to reach out to the, my art and my links and all these things. And I know it takes a lot. So I just want to deeply, deeply uh, express my gratitude. Um, I hope that you continue to do it. Um, I'm just, you know, as you're also artists, you're also doing your drops, you're doing this. Um, and I don't take it for granted. I know it takes a lot of energy, a lot of work. Um, and I just appreciate you both a lot for, for the work that you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, yeah everyone should go. Here, here's what you plug. <laughs> Thank you. Go listen to your podcast. What's the podcast with 40 episodes called? Oh, what is his name? See, I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. It's 2021. You can I know, but I, I love listening to old interviews from mm -hmm. like 2020, 2021, because it was it's a very different the mindset. Outer, the Outer Space Show. Yeah. If I'm reading yeah. in the link here, does it work? Um, I, let's see. Let's find I just out. shared the Spotify link to it. All right. Well, what awesome. I'll do is I will include that in our, uh, in our recap then. That'll be fun. Thank you. You. very cool thank you guys all right well thank you and uh i guess we'll be back next no wait ha 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 we'll, we'll all be in new york next we week will. So no we'll show be in next new york week. no show next week everybody we return again on uh april 12th uh is our next show uh in which case if everything goes to plan we will have mr ed balloon joining us oh so looking He's forward to have that. a lot of thoughts no, nah, no, nah. Ed. Ed doesn't have. Ed, Ed's very. I'm excited to dive show. into Ed's Ed's work. Big fan of Ed. Same. Yeah. So much love to him. All right. Well, then we will see you then, and uh, everyone have a great weekend, and we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. <laughs>